Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So, here's a little line from the latest Bungie update, which was patch notes. Apparently, the Nakre ship, at least I think it's pronounced Nakre, and I'm going to say Nakre for the rest of this video, was missing its lore tab, and, well, it's been added back in. And I guess that's pretty neat for Bungie to add that in with the expansion, and I wonder why it's the Winnower. It's the Winnower. Bungie waited for all this time for us to clear the raid and GM excision and for everything else to go on and for everyone to have their little self-contained Winnower freakouts to just drop another lore tab, and it's just the Winnower sending us a message, specifically to us. So needless to say, I'm mildly freaking out just a little bit. Not only that, but it's doing the thing in the update where the villain takes over Bungie.net and momentarily takes over the update text. So, uh, yeah, that's the kind of villain we're dealing with. That's, uh... I think only Savathun has done that before. Maybe The Witness in a few other bits? I'm not sure. With all that in mind, let's talk about the Winnower, what it said to us, and what it means for the future. But first, a word from our sponsors at Starforge. A lot of you know them very well at this point. They make absolutely fantastic PCs for gamers on a variety of budgets. If you're looking to defeat The Witness and save the universe, you might want to consider getting an upgrade to your setup. But for those of you of the more Titan persuasion, building one of these yourself is often a troublesome ordeal. Lots of complicated parts, and you can't just punch it all into place. That's why Starforge can create your custom rig for you, and save you a lot of hassle trying to figure it all out with the expensive PC parts. They also have a two-year parts and labor warranty, so no matter what, you're absolutely going to be covered. Go ahead and check them out at my link down below. Thanks again to Starforge for sponsoring this video. So, let's sit down and actually read this message from the Winnower first. Nakre. Even the most perfect of pearls has grit at its center. Let's chat, shall we? One more nice sit down for the books. Did you think you wouldn't hear from me again? After all this, you'd have missed me. I hope, and I would certainly have missed you. Have no fear, I'm not so easy to be rid of. Now, let me show you my beloved. Oh, no, not my sedimentary necrolite fossilized in time. You've seen that. I speak of that dear and distant expanse of the universe, miraculous in its fullness and its emptiness all at once. Are you surprised to hear of it? Yes, I never much cared for the change of rules, but here we are, and there's no use in crying of a spilled radiolaria. Besides, at the heart of it all, there was a gift. To me. That gift is the chance to speak with you. You and a billion like you. I am making this offer over and over again, in every tiniest cell and the vastest of civilizations. Let me in. Take what you need, be at ease. You have no say in the degradation of your telomeres, but in all the interim, the whole world is your sweet silicate shellfish. You exist because you have been more suited to it than all the others. Steal what you require from another, rather than spend the hours to build it yourself. Break foolish rules. Why would you love regulation? It serves you to cross lines, and if others needed rules to protect them, then they were not, after all, worthy of their existence. <laughs> uh, caricatures of villainy are out of style, I hear. Yes, I am no cackling mastermind. I am serious when I say this. It was not the trick of standing upright that lifted you from the dust. It was the mastery of fire, the cooking of cold corpse meat. That is not any unique faction's province, neither good nor evil. It is simply truth. Great beloved cosmos, always decaying, Always finding that same old lovely pattern. Despite every candle flame burning amid the flowers. A billion electrons taking the path of least resistance. In darkness, 
or in light, someone is always making my choice. Be seeing you. So, first of all, how the hell do we know that this is the Winua? Well, if you've read Unveiling, you doubtless recognize the actual tempo of the reading and the way the character conveys itself. But here are some really quick additional context things. When distinguishing the Winua from the Witness, we always look at pronoun usage. The Winua uses I and the Witness uses we. This passage is another one using I, so this is definitely not the Witness. Not that it'd make sense given the context of what's being said anyway. It has that same incredibly casual pattern of speech, something that has a familiarity or even a jovial tone at times. The same pattern of speech that you can see in both Unveiling and the communications made to Oryx by whatever he called the Deep within the Books of Sorrow. That's verse 4-2 or 4-3 for those who are interested. The text references what was said in the Books of Unveiling almost perfectly as well. It references the pattern that the Winnower saw constantly repeating in the universe over and over again. It references everything that the Winnower has been on about this whole time. So barring something so convoluted that it doesn't make sense at this moment in time, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the Winnower. And what a great bit of dialogue this really is. So. Let's first actually talk a little bit about the meaning of a few bits and pieces in this lore reading so you can all understand this just a little bit better. And that starts firstly with the actual name of the ship and the flavor text. This is all linked up with some notions found in Entelechy, I believe, the Final Shape Collector's Edition lore book that came with the physical Collector's Edition. So we'll go there and talk about that for just a second first. There's a moment displayed in that law book where one precursor is speaking to another, who has since left their civilization and gone into exile. It's on the cusp of them all becoming the witness. In the message sent out, the precursor who is about to become a part of the witness states that they have doubts and that they're sure that those doubts will be the grit subsumed by the pearl of certainty that is the witness. For those of you who don't know, this is the process of actually making a pearl. Grit within the center of an oyster is covered in a secretion of a pair of compounds that is rather shiny in texture, and eventually it will become a pearl. Those two compounds are calcium carbonate and arginite, and what do you know, together that substance which makes a pearl from grit, it's called nacre. It is the outer coating on the grit that you recognize a pearl for. But strangely enough, all this has nothing to do with the Winnower, that's more to do with the Witness and the Precursors. And yet, I think the two are interlinked. I don't think the name Nakre and the flavor text is just referring to the Witness and the Precursors and Intelliki. I also think that this is a bit of a perspective check from the Winnower. I might actually be jumping the gun here, but I think this is referential to the Witness mocking the outward perfection that the Witness supposedly portrayed. And yet, that outward perfection is marred by an inward flaw, the grit that the pearl has covered up. All of this is wrapped up in the ship's name and flavor text, and that is a lot of interjection and speculation, but I think it's an interpretation that makes sense at very least, and links the two together. The body of the text, though, is where things get really interesting. The first sentences are something akin to a friend reintroducing themselves, and if we're to believe that this is the perspective of the Winnower, then this is potentially a sincerely held belief. It knows that we have been carrying out its idea of brutality in exchange for survival for a very, very long time, and as it has said before in the Unveiling lore, it treasures that about us. It also assures us that it isn't so easy to be rid of, which yeah, I kind of hope so, for the sake of it being a good villain, but also for the sake of the narrative of destiny, if it is the kind of cosmic entity that we believe it to be. Next, and perhaps most confusingly, the Witness references what it is referring to as its beloved, the universe, before clarifying that its beloved is not the sedimentary necrolite fossilized in time. Before we get onto the Winnower's actual beloved, let's talk about what the hell all of that means. And I'll be honest, I don't really have an idea of what's being referenced here in concrete terms, but I'm gonna try. I initially thought that necrolites were meant to be a form of plant of some kind, but looking into it further, 
I just had no idea what it was, and I even went down the path of wondering if this was an invented word, some combination of acolyte and necrotic. I thought that that might be referential to the Witness and Oryx, the two beings that the Winnower had a direct hand in creating in some way, or at least in influencing in the case of Oryx, and, well, I still really wasn't convinced on that one, and I'm glad that I did a bit more research because I think I found something that makes just a little bit more sense. Because it could be something that's just to do with dirt and earth straight up. If you look up Necrolite online, Literally only one source even mentions the word, and that's Wikipedia. Yes, we are really scraping the bottom of the barrel for research purposes here without going to something like JSTOR, and I don't have those academic resources at my disposal so easily. It takes you to the word Necronite, which is apparently an offshoot of Necrolite. And Necronite is a foul-smelling kind of feldspar. What is feldspar? Feldspar is a kind of rock that's predominantly made up of silicates and makes up the majority of Earth's crust. The deep lore link here is potentially to the Vex, because they are silicon-based life forms. And, well, that means that if you're looking for radiolaria, then maybe you're looking for Feldspar and the silicates that can be found within. That being said, uh, yeah, I, I, I really don't know on this one. It's days like this that make me wonder if I should get a subscription to the Encyclopedia Britannica or not, but regardless, we press on. If this is about the Vex, then calling them sedimentary necrolite frozen in time makes a certain degree of sense, and it might refer to them as being the Vex of the Black Garden. Then again, the sedimentary bit might be referring to Earth literally, as opposed to saying something along the lines of them being base. If that's the case, then maybe it's talking about the Black Garden, something which the Winnower and us will have seen if we're to believe that that is the Garden from before time. But again, uh, that's not totally clear. Then again, uh, nothing about this is clear. I hate to say it, I don't have that many answers. This could be referring to the Black Garden itself for another reason, though. It's a structure, it's a place, and it makes me think about the wording that the Winnower uses here. You've seen that in reference to the Necrolite that it's talking about. This implies that what we're looking at previously is an object as opposed to a person or a group. By the way, I'm having equal amounts of trouble piercing this one, and it doesn't completely matter because the Winnower is going on and telling us about how it's learned to love something else, the universe at large. It goes on to clarify that this is because of the fact that even though it disagreed with the initial creation of the universe, and that it might cause more suffering, it is now very content with the way in which the universe operates, and it sees the pattern that it beheld in the flower game all over the universe. For those that don't remember, the flower game was the game played by the gardener and the winnower before time, and its repetitive results were the reason why the gardener wanted an extra rule, this extra rule created the universe, compounded the Gardener and Winnower as concepts embodying those rules, and caused the destruction of the flower game, the tearing down of the Tree of Silver Wings in the Garden before time, and the escape of the Vex. So, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Regardless, the Winnower now sees the pattern that it beheld within the flower game all over the universe. It is that rule, that one must be strong and must take to survive. In this law entry, the Winnower is quite simply imploring us to continue making the same choices that we have before. It wants us to keep taking. It makes a reference to something called a telomere, which basically is to do with DNA. The shorter your telomeres are, the more that you will age. So yeah, it's effectively saying that one day it knows that we will die, but it states that in the meantime, in the interim, the world is our sweet silicate shellfish? Yeah, that's just a transplanting of the phrase, the world is our oyster. So, it's saying, yeah, I know you'll die, but in the meantime, take. Do as you will. The world is your oyster. Take advantage of it. It tells us to break rules that don't suit us. It tells us to steal from those that have what we require. It tells us to cross lines if those lines are not serving us, and to disregard those that the lines were there to protect. The Winnower in these last few moments is really celebrating. Even with all the suffering that is occurring, someone out there is always choosing its way to exist. 
and that apparently is enough to make any suffering from the gardener's choice well worth it. Once again, near the end of its message, it communicates the idea that what it believes in isn't good or evil, but instead is truth. It even goes as far as to say that it isn't a villain and isn't trying to be some caricature of villainy or some terrible mastermind. According to the Winnower, it cannot be these things because it is simply a fundamental truth of the universe, a rule that was written in since the flower game ended. And then of course it says, be seeing you, to end the message. I think that you can look at this as an active or a passive statement. I think the Winnower is always seeing us. If it is the rule of the universe that takes precedent whenever we might prove our might, it is always watching us whenever we crush a thrall under our boot, or shred a vex with bullets, or shatter the ghost of a loosened hive. It is always there as a rule of the universe, and so in this sense, it's not at all impossible for it to be seeing us. But there's also the active interpretation of things. If we are going to head out into the universe in whatever happens in Frontiers, and to explore so many things lost and left time, I think we might genuinely be seeing the Winnower soon. I don't know if Bungie is setting up the Winnower to be the big bad of the next Destiny franchise, but if they are, then this might be the note calling us forward and letting us know that the world is about to experience a radical change very soon. A change that starts with its arrival into the story proper. Mara and Ikora spoke once about the potential for even greater challenges than the Witness to be on the horizon. It's possible that the Winnower is such a challenge. There is one last thing I do also want to talk about before we all go forward from this though, and it's this, the line where the Winnower states that there is no point crying over spilled radiolaria. This is in regards to the choice the Gardener made to add that new rule to the flower game and the aftermath of that choice, where the fight broke out between the Gardener and the Winnower, and where in this moment supposedly primal patterns rumored to be the Vex, escaped from the flower game into the universe proper. This has to be one of the best explanations for the origins of the Vex in the lore. That being said, they also appear in a different place in the lore, and that's within the Intelliki lore book, where the precursors mention having access to glass mines, which are capable of eerily accurate predictions of the future, and seem somewhat similar in nature to the Vex. Remember that these predictions went forward through time and looked through all of space. And, well, they're glass mines. Fault of glass, anybody? That might be a red herring, but ultimately, it could lend a little context to us if we're going to try and piece together a timeline of everything that happened in Destiny's ancient history and Age of Origins. But for now, that is it. Whether it will always be watching as an omniscient truth of the universe, or whether it will soon stand in our presence as it did with Oryx, the Winnower is out there. Still waiting. Still watching. But that's all from me for now. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like. And of course, also remember to leave your own thoughts down below in the comments section. I have no idea what to even ask you all for this one. This kind of came out of left field on a time when I was taking a few days off just so I could rest and recover a little bit. But, I mean, well, <laughs> it's definitely one of the largest lore bombs of the expansion, alongside the line from the Witness itself in the raid, stating that it is not the Winnower. From all of this, though, I'm sure there are 10,000 questions, or 10,000 different thoughts you may all have, so leave them down below. And if you have any more content that you want, let me know about that too, and subscribe so you can see it. You can also hit the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside. <laughs>